Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, we're going to give you the 26 Carnival Cruise tip that's going to be essential for the first time cruiser. Listen, if you're on this video, I already know. You've either one booked your cruise already, now you're working in reverse trying to figure out what it is I need to do and know before I get on this cruise. Yes. Or you're in the research process where you're really trying to figure out if this is something that you can pull off. But listen, these 26 tips that we're going to give you is almost going to guarantee you that you're going to get on there with smooth sailing and that yes. you're not going to have the hiccups that most first-time cruisers encounter on their cruise. Yeah, and we know y'all excited yeah. and, you, and you're overwhelmed and nervous all at the same time. And that's a natural reaction. Yes, indeed. But you ready to get into it? Let's get into it. Tip number one. Tip number one for the first-time carnival cruiser. Listen to me good. <laughs> Please do not double tip at the bar. Mm. Know that when you go to any bar on Carnival and you purchase a drink, the gratuities are included in the drink. Us, the only time we recommend giving anything extra other than what's on that receipt, if the bartender is going above and, and beyond, beyond, they are hooking you up and you want to be a blessing. So that's the only time that you should be giving extra. If not, do not give any extra because it's, already, it's included, already in there. Already included. Tip number two, make sure that you have the documentation needed to board said cruise. Yeah. I am a stickler for telling people, before you even book your cruise, make sure that you have these essential pieces of documentation because it could be a make or break in the long run. First of all, make sure that you have at least your birth certificate. And I'm not talking about the birth certificate that's from the hospital. They got your, <laughs> your mama thumbprint, your daddy thumbprint, and your feet print on it. That is not a valid birth Dude. certificate. You're going to need something from like the vital statistics, the health department, something like that. That is a valid birth certificate. And along with the birth certificate, you will also need an ID. Government issued or state issued, you just need an ID. Also, you can also go a little further. If you're one of those advanced people in the world, you're ready to take traveling real serious. Uh-huh. Go ahead and get your passport. You can travel with your passport, and you will also need an ID to go along with that as well. But the other boarding documents that you're going to need to get on the ship is a boarding pass. Mm -hmm. Your boarding pass does not populate until two weeks prior to you being able to get on a cruise in your check-in process. So don't worry about it until two weeks before you'll be able to go ahead and get that. Make sure that your luggage tags are printed off as yes. well so that they could be ahead and put on your luggage so that you can get on there and your luggage can meet you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Tip number three. We highly recommend this for first-time cruisers mm. is to book a pre-cruise hotel. So what that means is that you're not going to the ship the day of the cruise. You're going to the ship the day before the cruise because so much can happen. When we was on one of our cruises last year and the mm. first time or they was driving in their brand new truck and brand their brand new, new truck... I can't remember exactly what happened, but they broke down mm -hmm. and they had to end up fixing that and they still end up getting to the cruise. But I'm so glad that it came in a day before because yeah. if not, they would have most likely missed, missed the cruise. That. Yeah. So, yes, please book you a pre-cruise hotel. You're going to thank me later. Yep. So that you can be <laughs> in the city. Yes. The night before. Yes. Listen, it's a game changer. Tip number four. Listen to me good. <laughs> Book the cabin that you want straight out. And what I mean by that is you'll get into different places or you'll hear different things. Oh, Carnival will probably offer you an upgrade offer later on. They are few and far in between. And the way that they work yeah. is they'll give that same upgrade offer to 50 people. The first people that bite on it, then that offer is off the table because... The cabin that they're trying to upgrade to yeah. is now secured. If you want a balcony, book a balcony. Yes. Don't go to an ocean view and hope that you'll get a great upgrade offer for that balcony because it may not happen. Get what you want. Don't worry about it. But I do want to give you a little lesson, especially being a first-time cruiser. I know a lot of people, because I am a first-time cruiser specialist, they'll get on and they'll be like, oh, I want an ocean view cabin, but I want it higher up. The design of most ships are 
on decks one and two mm-hmm. are their ocean view cabins, which are closer down to the water line. So if that's going to freak you out, we can go ahead and X you out of ocean view right then and there. The only way to be higher up is then you're going to have to start getting into your balcony cabin categories and your insider cabin categories. An insider cabin is exactly what it sounds like. It's more in the middle of the ship and it has no windows. Yes. So once you're in there, it's... It is what it is. <laughs> you have no sense of direction to be able to look out your window or see anything. Ocean view, window. Balcony, balcony. Get the cabin that you want, that you'll feel secure in for yes. the duration of your cruise. All right. Tip number five. Mm-hmm. Check in. We highly recommend you pay attention to that because Carnival usually sends the check-in email about two weeks before mm-hmm. your cruise. This is where you're going to answer a boatload of questions. Yep. This is where you're going to be able to print your boarding pass, and this is where you're going to be able to print your luggage tags. Mm-hmm. But we highly recommend that you get up at 12 a.m. <laughs> or stay up until 12 a.m. Mm-hmm. when that the, when that email is getting ready to come out so you can pick your boarding times, especially yeah. if you want a, a boarding time that's a little bit earlier. Because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, or they you book a group up. Or- yeah. They book up quick, and y'all want everybody to be together. Exactly. Yeah, so everybody that wants to be together better be up at 12 a.m. Yes, because <laughs> everybody has to do their individual. So, for instance, if me and my husband booked in the same cabin, I can do it for the both of us. Yeah. But if you have other people that's traveling with you, they have to do their own as well. Because, like my husband said, you have to attest to different things. You have, to, And then you also are setting up your onboard spending in yes. this process. So when people start talking about their sale and sign card and how do you get money on it, this is where this process is handled at. Yes. They're going to ask you, do you want to do it with cash? And of course, when you do it with cash, you can't do that until you arrive at the port. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. And then, or do you want to secure it with a card? That is done during the check-in process. Yes. So let's go ahead and hit on tip number six. (laughs) As a first time cruiser, listen, do not feel bad if you buck this up. Right. Because it's going to take practice. And I'm going to be honest with you, as many times as I do it, I still am a work in progress. Pack enough clothing yes <laughs> pack enough and i know as a first timer you're probably going to pack more than Man, enough. what you need yeah but have <laughs> a mental inventory of the stuff that you did not use on your first cruise and then on your second you'll be able to be like i don't need that i don't need that but my husband always has a rule of thumb for him is one outfit per day yep until it's time to go to dinner I'm two outfits per day. So if I'm on a five-day sale and I'm going to have at least 10 outfits, it's probably more like 20. But anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, fix it. Make it right. <laughs> make it right. Yeah. So you want to make sure um, that you have enough clothing. And also, we always tell people, it doesn't matter that you're, most of the time, your first-time cruiser, we're going to a, cl- a tropical climate. That's just, yeah. that's the rite of passage, right? But there are nights where it gets really cool. You're on the water. That ship is in full speed ahead, and you will get that wind. Or if you're on your balcony, make sure that you're packing some kind of jacket. It could be a jean jacket, hoodie, windbreaker. Do they even make those anymore? Um, (laughs) I don't even know. (laughs) um, And something like some long pants. Like you can do some leggings, some joggers or whatever. Something that will be able to make you feel more comfortable when you get those cooler days and nights. Tip number seven for the first Mm -hmm. time Carnival Cruiser. We highly recommend that you get your tumbler. This is great for when you get drinks from the bar, whether it's soda, alcohol, juice, or anything you got to put ice in. You don't have to worry about your drinks getting watered down because these jones keep them jones cold and keep yeah. the ice from melting. And they covered. Yeah, and covered. So that way you want to get in the pool and stuff like that. You don't have to have their cups because I hate their cups. Yeah, and they're <laughs> short. Yes. <laughs> also, you want to make sure that you have your lanyard, man. Mm-hmm. This is going to hold your sign and sale card. Yep. Uh, and we're going to be talking more about the sign and sale card in a minute. Yeah, we will. And then also, you don't want to forget your luggage tags. Yes, you are going to definitely, definitely need this. You do not want to staple the luggage <laughs> tag paper to your luggage. That's a sure way. Let me hear you. Let me Let me hear you. Sure way for your stuff to get lost on the ship because Hello. that paper is going to be ripped off 
We just got off the celebration uh, about two weeks ago. Yeah. And that ship holds over 6,000 people. So imagine your luggage going up underneath that ship with all that luggage and your stuff is, is stapled, your paper is stapled to your luggage. Hmm. Sure way for it to get ripped off. Exactly. Then you so, got to go and find it in the sea of everybody else's that got ripped off. Yes. And, like, Oop, and if you're anything like most people, our luggage is what color? Black. <laughs> so all these things will be in our Cruise Essential store. It's going to be right. linked down in the description. All right. Tip number eight for the first time Carnival Cruiser. <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> Listen, if this is not the question I get every day, I eat my hat. Do I need the Wi-Fi package? And my immediate um, answer to your question is a question. Do you want to get on the internet? Yes. Because <laughs> once you get on that cruise ship, you are at the mercy of having to use their Wi-Fi. Yeah. Your Wi-Fi from your phone is not going to work, your data, all of that, because we'll talk about that later. But once you get out and see, the devices that we have here where we can go from computer to phone to iPad and all of that, uh-uh. you have to have a Wi-Fi package to do that. And they do charge you for for it, and they do not give you a certain amount of minutes for d per day for free. No. No. <laughs> so do you need the Wi-Fi package? Do you want to get on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> and each person in the cabin that wants it has to purchase it as yes. well. Yes, yes. Yeah, it can't be that you're sharing it with your, with your husband, your wife, your kids, and all them. Everybody has to purchase it. And let me tell you, don't even try that game because it is we tried so it one time. frustrating because... You have to log out of the person that's in and then re-log in. And it's a it's not a long a process, but it's it's much easier just to have your own Wi-Fi. And then package. you need their credentials as well yes. because once you log in, you, you need, need a folio, folio number, number. Yeah. that's attached to their sign and sale card. So he's gonna be like, What's your folio number? So I can <laughs> log in. Just get the Wi-Fi package. Yes. And it and then for people that want to communicate with people, like if you want to call your kids or something like yeah, that. Yeah, family back at home. Then you'll be able to do that. Well, with certain packages, you'll be able yeah. to do that through like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, yep. or things like that. Because once you get on board, that phone has to go in airplane mode. We'll talk about that a little later, too. Yeah. Tip number nine for the first time Carnival Cruiser. Mm -hmm. We get this question a lot. How much cash should I bring? Um, mm -hmm. We it's did have one figure <laughs> <laughs> until we just got off the celebration. So now our new figure is still the um, minimum is 500. So we say 500 to 1,000 because y'all know right now we in inflation. Everything, the cost of everything is up. up. Gas, groceries, you name it, costs way more. Yep. And the thing about it on the ship, you're not going to really be spending much cash on the ship anyway because the ship is a cashless system with the sign and sale card. But that's for if you want to be able to tip, like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And then also, when you get in port, you be able to pay for stuff because we don't recommend that you pay for stuff in port with your debit card, which we're going to talk about that some more in a minute as well. All right. What's import, we baby? But import is the destinations that the cruise ship mm -hmm. is going to. So we just got back from Cozumel, uh, Costa Maya, and Honduras. Yeah. So those places which you consider in port. Yes. In yes. your destinations. Tip number 10. Yeah. Uh, this is golden. Yeah. Everyone that learns about it is like, why didn't I know about this earlier? Join the Facebook groups for the sailing that you're going to be on. So, for instance, if you're going to go on a carnival celebration October 5th, 2023, mm -hmm. go ahead and go to Facebook and type exactly what I just said. Carnival celebration October 5th, 2023. More than likely, there is a group already set up and it's going to be exclusively, well, it should be exclusively <laughs> um, for the people that's going to be on that sailing. What that does is it starts to build a sense of community around mm -hmm. that particular sailing. You'll start to learn people that's in the group, personalities. I've seen where people be like, oh, are you flying in the day before? Mm -hmm. All right, bet. When you fly in, let's all meet up for drinks or let's go to this rooftop in Miami. And just so it all it just mean, brings the whole vacation experience together. Right. Then they'll do things <clears throat> like, OK, let's do a bar crawl. Let's go ahead yep. and do shot glass exchange, gift exchange. Gift exchange. We've yeah, done yeah. that. It's fun. Oh, it's fun. That was so fun. It's fun. We so, got a lot of good gifts, too. Yeah. And then you'll start to learn people. And, and especially if you're a solo cruiser, 
Yeah. Then you'll start to meet people that are also solos. And I've seen people, you know, form a tribe out of meeting people in Facebook yep. groups because they have the same common yeah, interests. Yeah, they become travel buddies. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is dope. Yeah. Tip number 11 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. Oh, gosh. Now, I'm sad to say this, but I'm also glad that they did it. I in too. the dining room, after the... Uh, you can only get two entrees for free. Mm -hmm. At the third one, it's going to actually cost you five bucks. Right. They used to have it where all the food was unlimited. <laughs> but let me tell you, waste, we waste, wasted waste. so much food. You would just order skit just to try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put, you get a bite and you send it back. Yeah, that's that was so much waste. So it I'm was. so glad that Carnival did do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I know they're going to be making some more profit from it. But yeah, I, I don't like waste. Yeah, I don't either. It, it's yeah. not a good look. Yeah. It's not a good look to be at the end of dinner and it's just a... A table full of plates with food still on it. Look, your table look like a <laughs> charcuterie board. <laughs> but at the end of the day, with the two entrees, we feel like that you will your belly More is going to be enough. full with those two entrees, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Tip number 12. Listen, this is something that gets people a little confused. So I want to go ahead yeah. and bring as much clarity to it as possible. A carry-on bag for a cruise is different than a carry-on bag for like a flight or anything like that. Yes. So when we tell people, make sure that you pack a carry-on bag to go on with you when you get on your cruise, it simply means whatever type of piece of luggage. Yes. It could be a trash bag as far as I care. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but there are certain things that you are required to bring on the ship with you. And just having them in a bag is actually makes it easier. So I have what I, this is my work bag. So this is what I bring as my carry-on. What will be in my carry-on? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Very important. Your boarding pass yes. needs to be in that carry-on. Please do not make the mistake of putting that in your check luggage that you're going to give to the porters. Because once they send that luggage and put it on those carts and send it for screening, she it's, gone. it's gone. It's hardly any chance that you're going to get your luggage back out of probably eight to 10,000 pieces of luggage right. to get your documentation back. Also with documentation, your boarding documents. So if you're boarding with your passport, your birth certificate, your ID, it needs to be in your carry on. Yes. You hear me? You hear me? <laughs> also in your carry on. Like we said, if you want to go ahead and get get the party started or get the water in before the party started, make sure your cup is in there. Make sure medication. Yeah. So if y'all have seen this, I make my own pill box. This is one that I get from Amazon. I actually have a bigger one now. I need to show y'all that. But Oh, it's, that's it's golden. Game changer. Yeah. And the reason for that being is there's always a chance that your medication could get lost in your check luggage or your check luggage could rather could get yeah. lost or delayed. If you're a person that takes medicine on a routine, on a schedule, if that happens, that could be very, very, very. bad for yes. you. <laughs> Make sure that that's on you as well. Make sure that if you're a person that wants to swim before, like at sail away, yeah. pack your stuff in your carry-on, you going to need Yeah, put that swimwear in there. Them, them trunks and that baby shoes. Yes. So also, probably the most important thing to most people is Carnival does allow each adult to bring a 750 milliliter bottle of wine or and champagne. No bigger now. No bigger. <laughs> and don't, don't, don't go to the store and get that liter. Yeah. And don't <laughs> try to say, well, I'm going to bring a 750 of liquor. No, they're nah. going to take that. Yeah. <laughs> Wine or champagne. Yes. If you don't drink the alcohol, you can also do the non-alcoholic version of your wine yep. and champagne as well. But that has to be in your carry-on because they need to see it. Yes. And they need to inspect it to make sure that you ain't... <laughs> Put the blow dryer to it. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just I'll telling tell you, you what, what other people do. <laughs> I just tell you what I do with it. <laughs> but anyway, so, and then also they do allow each person to mm -hmm. bring 24 cans of soda. So if you want to go ahead and cut some costs that way, when I'm not saying soda, so 24 cans or cartons. Yes. It could be juice. Mini Maid makes a good juice that you can do in the cans. Also cartons. Now, is that 24 per person or 24 for a couple? 24 Per person, All right. but you're gonna have to carry it. 
Yeah. <laughs> so you you do with that what, <laughs> what you, you will. will. <laughs> also, like I said, with the cartons, they do not allow you to bring bottled water on board. But if you find a canned water that you like, you can definitely bring that. It's just the bottles they have a problem with. Yeah. If you want to bring some cartons of water on board, you can definitely do that. If you want to make it the coconut water, they fine with that too. Yep. Just as long as it's not those bottles. Yep. And if you need water, bottled water, you can actually pre-order that in the gift shop on Carnival's website. And you yep. can pre-purchase that. And they about what, $10, 11 now? Yeah, they're about eleven dollars for twelve bottles yeah. of water. Like the this size. <laughs> like those, yeah. You mm -hmm. so yeah. So we get that question all the time. So please don't show up with your 24 pack of waters <laughs> on you up there like this. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna take them right they from gonna you. They're gonna take them. You're, yep. gonna, you're gonna waste your good little <laughs> money. All right, tip number 13 for the first time carnival mm -hmm. cruiser. Now come close and listen to me real good. Come in, my life. Download the Carnival <laughs> Hub app right now. Your boy, <laughs> you see where she's looking at me? Your boy, they've been a victim of not downloading that <laughs> Carnival <laughs> Hub app. Get on the ship, because I tell myself, I'm going to do it when I get on the ship. Mm -hmm. Get caught up in, in and getting sail away. And sail away and talking to people, having a good time, and we out at sea. And if, uh, if you don't have the Wi-Fi package, you're not going to be able to download the Carnival Hub app. So I did have the Wi-Fi package, but it was just a nightmare still to be able to do it. But if you don't have it, you have to go to guest services to get them to help you put it on. And if you know anything about guest, guest services, we don't like it because those lines is too long. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be wasting all that time yes. that you could be enjoying yourself on the cruise to fix something that you could have did right now. So take your phone out. And go to the Android store or the App Store on your iPhone and, and download, download it. the app. Yes. What is the app for? The app is your lifeline to everything on board. Everything. So until you get on board, that app is is pretty useless. It's right. literally just a countdown clock to your cruise date. But once you get on board and you put your phone in airplane mode, that's when the app comes alive. Yes. So you'll be able to do every night check in for your dining. Yes. You'll be able to do like your picture purchases through yep. the, the apps. Go to like it'll blow with the itinerary for the day. It'll let you basically it's your lifeline to everything. But it also is your lifeline to the chat feature. Yeah, my man. If you want to chat with anybody on board. That chat feature comes alive once you get on board. Yes. But here's the thing. The chat feature costs $5 for the duration of the cruise. But here's the thing. Per the, person. Here, per person. So if you want to chat with Jack and Jack didn't pay the $5, you just won't you be chatting to Jack. to Jack. So everyone <laughs> that you want to converse with definitely has to also pay the $5 to do so. Duration of the cruise, It is it? 100% no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better than not having any means of communication to those you need. And then also um, we were saying it has a schedule of all the activities on it. But recently Carnival started introducing the paper itineraries yeah, again. back on the ship. I kind of like really don't need it. But just in case you, if you don't have a cell phone, you will be able to have the itinerary on paper when you get on the ship. I like the idea of having to ask for the paper copy if you need it. Yeah, I feel like it. it's just wasteful. Yeah. So tip number 14. Yeah. We talked about this a little bit. Once you get on board, we're going to need you to put that phone in airplane mode. There's no, it's nothing different. Immediately. <laughs> it's nothing different than being on a flight and the flight attendants and the captain comes on and they're like, hey, it's time to put your phone in airplane mode. And what that does, it, it shuts down the data on your phone. Yeah. Why do we need to shut down the data on your phone? You need to shut that down because guess what? The phone is going to do what the phone is designed to do. That phone is going to start roaming more than a crackhead at the first <laughs> of the month looking for a, for a hit. <laughs> and what's going to happen when that phone is roaming out there at sea trying to find a signal that's not going to connect? Mm -hmm. You're going to pay for that. Yep. Some people have gotten off their cruise and had bills of five, six hundred dollars, yeah. a couple thousand dollars Ooh. in roaming fees because they didn't put their phone in airplane mode. So I know that y'all like, well, hold on. How are we going to use the app and the Wi-Fi and all of that in, in airplane mode? It works. Yes. You will be able to use the Carnival Hub app in airplane mode. You don't have to have an internet package to use the actual Carnival Hub app. Nope. But that is the only thing. 
that yeah. you'll be able to use without the internet. But your Wi-Fi package, if you purchase that, will work perfectly fine with that, with your phone being in airplane mode. Yep. Tip number 15 uh -oh. for the first time <laughs> Carnival Cruiser. And she said, uh-oh, because we done had some mm -hmm. arguments with people with this in our comments mm -hmm. here on YouTube. Yes. Because different people have difference of opinions. Now, we highly recommend that you prepay mm -hmm. your gratuities. I agree. The reason being is because, well, some people say this, they don't like doing prepaid gratuities because they want to um, give tips to people that they see that's actually helping them. Right. But we're not thinking about the people that's in the background that's helping those people that you see to be able to do their job, like people doing the laundry, people mm -hmm. that's cooking the food and exactly. stuff like that, to make sure that on the fun ship, you actually have fun. So that's why we highly recommend that you do that. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you do not prepay your gratuities when you book your true cruise, hello. the night before, <laughs> when it's time to settle up on the sign and sale card, which we're going to talk about some more in a minute, is they're going to charge that to your sign and sale. And I'm telling you, you know when it happens because it'd be so many people over at guest services uh -huh. to get that removed. <laughs> and I'd be so like, you're going to have to stand in that long line for God knows how long to get that removed. So mm -hmm. we highly recommend you do that. So we can take care of the people that's taking, taking care, care of, of us. us the entire time we're on there. And I like the idea you used, because this is when we was in corporate America, that the execs at the top will get the bonuses and all we got was just our paychecks. And we was the ones that's they doing the work, work to make sure we was the one to make them look good. But the people that's the face yeah. are the ones that get the ones that yeah. get the reward. So that's why we highly recommend you do that to take care of those people in the background. Yep. Because they do an excellent job. They do an amazing job. Yes. Way more than I would put up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number 16. Yeah. We've been preaching this to the choir and, and I think we're so passionate about it because both of us have banking and brokerage backgrounds <laughs> as we used to work in corporate America. Like, yeah, we know the detriment of this happening. Do not use your debit card while you're in destination. And also do not try to link your debit card to your, your sign, sign and sale, sale card. Yeah. Are we saying that things are not secure? No, we're not saying that they're not secure. But what we are saying is if you link your card to your um, your debit card to your sign and sale card, you open yourself up for a lot of holds on yes. your account. So not only will you have the money you're spending not be available because that's gone, it's spent, but you also have holds that lets them know that you have enough money to settle up for the yes. next wave of purchases that you're going to make. Right. I have seen just recently. Yeah, recent. <laughs> recently that someone had $800 Ooh. in holds when on their debit home. card when they got back home. And you just have to wait for that to go ahead and fall off. Because as you begin to spend, <clears throat> the more the holds will be. Because like I said, they want to make sure that you can, that they can settle up at the right. end. Because what you ain't going to do is spend and charge up $1,000 worth of stuff, but you only got $200, only got $200 in your yeah. account. <laughs> also, we also say don't use your debit card in destination. Yeah. It's because you're using your card in places that they're not, not name brand. You know, they're vendors. They're set up. And we're not saying that no one is not trustworthy, but right. we are saying that you open yourself up for people to skim your card or be able to use your debit card number after you don't got back on the ship. Yeah. And guess what happens? You're on the ship, not able to take care of business right away. Right. And by the time you get home from your five, seven, 10 day cruise, your money is so much easier to, you know, to dispute charges when it comes to credit cards. Yes. And things that don't much look right. easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also, um, people ask us this, do they put the holes on the credit cards too? Yes. Yes, they do mm -hmm. on the credit cards too, but you, you ain't worried about it. that. You don't feel that because you don't most of the time use your credit card to pay your bills. Right. But if you're enjoying these tips, please go ahead and smash that like button so the algorithm can send this video out to more first time cruisers so they can get these tips just like you. Tip number 17 mm -hmm. for the first time counter cruiser, and we get this question all the time. What's not included in my cruise fare? Uh -huh. First of all, I want to let you know that there is a lot. It is a lot. That is included in your mm -hmm. cruise fare. But here's just a few things that are not. Yo, of course, we were just talking about gratuities. 
Gratuities is not included. Mm -hmm. We just were talking about the Wi-Fi package. That's not right. included. The Cheers package is not included. The All your bubbles. specialty diners like the steakhouse, the chef table, bonsai, tapenaki. All those type of restaurants are not included in your cruise um, fare. The excursions right. are not included in your cruise fare. So be prepared to pay extra for these things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The money makers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are the money makers. And then also, um, we're going to have a link down in the description where um, I'm going to have a, a link where you can see what is and what's not included in your cruise mm -hmm. fare because it's a long list. Yep. Yeah. All right, tip number 18. This is something that we do, which also aids us in being able to yes. really take on as least amount of money as possible onto our cruise, is we pre-purchase everything. Yes. So we try to take this cruise and make it like an all-inclusive experience for us. So for instance, once we pay for our cruise, before we get on board, we have bought our Wi-Fi package. We have ordered water for the room if we want to participate in any other specialty dining, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, depending on if we're getting on a ship that has something different than the other ships we've been on, then we'll partake in that. Because, right. of course, you want to try something different. If you are a person that like to flick it up and take the pictures and you don't want to fall into the picture trap of being able, <laughs> at the end of the day, you just get huh. three, four hundred dollars in pictures, Ooh. purchase one of their picture packages ahead of time. So anything that you know that you're going to need, just go ahead and do it ahead of time. So once you're on board, for the most part, you might be doing something in a casino yep. or you may just buy, you know, upcharge something in the restaurant. Like, oh, I want the steak tonight. So I'll upcharge and get a, you know, a steak in the dining room or something like that. But other than that, you should be good to go if yeah. you if you go ahead and take care of most things ahead of time. And it's a great way to budget too. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So if it's a, a certain amount of money that you only want to spend pre buying it actually sets you up for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Tip number 19. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of controversial too, because everybody yes. has difference of opinion. We highly recommend that you buy travelers insurance. Because you are a first-time cruiser. You're getting ready to go out there and probably do some stuff that you don't <laughs> normally do in your everyday uh -huh, life. Course. Example, in should. 2021, we went to <sighs> Ultras Ridge, Jamaica, on our cruise for her birthday. And she fell on Dunn's River and ended up tearing the ligament in her thumb. Now, regretfully, she thought it was just sprained sprain. and hurt. And, but she did not go to the medic. But at the same time, if... We did not have travel insurance, and she did have to go to the medic. We would have paid out the butt yeah. to be able to get that But fixed. no lube. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, we holler at that. Also, you just never know what's going to happen. Never mm -hmm. know if you may have to cancel, move your dates. So the travel insurance covers so much. I can't go into it all right yeah. here. It's right. It's on Carnival's website. Please read it to see everything that's covered. But we yes. holler, we do not travel without it because absolutely don't even play with your life. You just spend all that money for the cruise. Protect, protect it. Your <laughs> protect it. Yes. 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 <laughs> all right. Tip number 20. Reserve what you need to reserve as soon as you board. And you're probably like, well, hold on. What can we reserve on board? I'm talking about things that can only be done once you get on board. Right. For instance, we were just on the celebration. So we knew immediately that we wanted to get on Bolt, which is the first roller coaster at sea. That roller coaster Don't ask bomb, me <laughs> why we decided to do this. We did. I will never do it again. I loved it. I'm going to do it again. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> but what happens is everybody gets on that ship and has the same idea. Is oh, let me go ahead and get my stuff reserved. So what happens is... If you're one of the people say, oh, I'm going to wait, see how I feel. By the time you think about that, then the slots are already filled up. So what happened to us was we had to wait until the last, the next to the last day of the cruise to get on boat because yep. it was all booked up. Then also you have to think about it like this. It's been running, uh, just consistently running. The whole cruise. The whole cruise. So now they're going to have to start maintenancing and doing and greasing up that thing. So 
Like, yeah, because it broke down like two times <laughs> when we wow. was on this ship. And I was like, God, is yeah, this you? Yeah, and it broke down right at the time that we was getting ready to get on. I was like, please, Say, man. This come you? on, Lord. Yeah. But also, I've been good. Yeah, so, but also, <laughs> if you get on board and you see some things that you didn't think that you were going to be interested in, right. but now you actually visibly see, oh, that restaurant looks like it'll be a good time in there. <clears throat> oh, I see them at the hibachi, you know, the tapenaki. That looked cool. Yeah. Go ahead and reserve that as soon as you think about it because- you may not have an opportunity later. Tip number 21 for the first time, Conor Cruiser. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to me good on this one as well. Woo. If you are doing an excursion, mm -hmm. please get back to the ship at least one hour early or at least start making your way back mm -hmm. one hour early because you do not want to get left. Now, the blessing is if you're on a Conor's excursion, they can't leave you. They're going to have yeah. to wait for you. So we've been there. We was on a dolphin excursion last year. <laughs> yeah, and it was like and an hour kept, behind. It kept, it kept raining. So the people was like, hey, we y'all y'all getting this experience. So we're going we gonna to go in this little hut while it's raining. When the, when the rain stopped, we're going back to the dolphins. Even the dolphins didn't like the rain. Yeah, the, the dolphins, dolphins was like, mm -mm. Uh, we ain't doing this. So, but if we had decided to book the excursion on a third party, because we get a lot of first timers ask us to be like, you know, ain't it cheaper to go with a third it party? Is. But it's it's so risky, though, because if that third party don't get you back in time, if Connor will say, we leaving at 530 and they get you back there at 630, uh, you left. You left. <laughs> and the thing about it, my wife was just telling me a story before we got on that happened to a gentleman. I'm going to let her share this, that he actually... Um, he got put off. Him he got put off the yeah. ship, but the concept... Yeah. Uh, what you have to do is the same whether you get left in excursion or get put off the ship. Yeah, so for instance, most first-time cruisers do not have passports. I mean, it's right. just what it is. Um, you haven't invested in it yet because you don't know if this is something you want to continue to do. So what happened is the guy got put off with his son. His son did something on a cruise. So they got put off in a destination and they did not have passports. Mm. So what happens is you have to go to the embassy and you have to get an emergency passport. Then you have to book emergency flights up out of there, hotel rooms, all of that. But then you have to do a couple of trips to the embassy if something goes wrong because the mm. embassy will only stamp your um, temporary passport, your emergency passport, once you have secured flights. So if you go to the embassy and be like, I need to work out, and get my money right so I can get these flights. You got to go back to them when you get your confirmations because the premise of you being able to get this emergency passport is for you just to leave wow. and get back to the United States. It will cost you more. Yeah, because that guy said it cost him more than the eight-day cruise. It cost him more than the eight-day cruise that he was on to be able to figure out how to get back. You do not want to get left. Right. And my, my husband <laughs> said, make sure that you're back in time. We also have to remember when we're traveling into destinations, sometimes there's what we call ship time. Yes. And there's island time. Yes. And whatever time zone you might go into, those times might be an hour or, or different or more yes. from each other. For instance, we went to Cozumel. It's an hour behind us. So if we went on Cozumel time, we would have been late for the ship. Yep. So make sure you may want to just go like to Dollar General somewhere and just get you a cheap, cheap watch and just make it the ship time so that you'll make sure that you're always on the right time. Because sometimes our phones will flip, even if we tell it not to flip. Yeah. And you'd be like, what time is it for real? Like we literally did that the entire time we was in Cosmo. What time is it for real? What time is it for real? <laughs> because it will mess you up. Yeah. So that's why that's why we always um, talk about the rules on Carnival because we know you going out there with your family to have some fun. And I want to plug this right here because these things can do the same thing about getting you kicked off the ship or cost you a lot of money. You cannot bring no weed. Yeah. You cannot bring no CBD. Yeah. You can bring your nicotine vape. You can bring your cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And they have designated areas on the ship that you can actually smoke your um, cigarettes and stuff. But you cannot do it on a balcony. Right. And when you break these rules, Carnival can charge you up to $500 and or kick you off the mm -hmm. ship for that sailing. And like my wife said, they kick you off and you got to go through all that, end up paying for all that could cost you more than the cruise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you could have just left your extracurriculars at home 
or you got on the ship and you didn't right. follow the rules and smoked on your balcony. So, yeah, we don't want that to happen to you because no. it's happened to so many people. And I feel like at this point, the carnival is just looking to make examples. They are out of people. They are. They are. They are making statements. When we was in Miami Ooh, on the celebration. Bad. The drug dogs. Let me tell you, they mm-hmm. were deep. They were everywhere. I have never seen the drug dogs sniff the bags going underneath the ship. Yeah. I have not seen. I've that. never seen it. No, usually you see the dog sometime when you're going through um, TSA and customs, mm-hmm. but under the ship, that was like, yeah, Bef- yeah, yep. Before you <laughs> before they could roll them into security, the them, dogs, them was, dogs was so deep. I was like, do I got any on me? <laughs> my, I, my listen, <laughs> I looked up one time and the handler was taking the dog and just going down the line. So as we were standing in line to check into the ship, yeah. they brought the dogs down. So and so that he could sniff everybody in line, it scared the mess out of me. Yeah. So I literally looked up and the dog was like right there. Yep. I was like, what the heck? And then before we could go and go to another section of the terminal, we had to pass by the dog again. And if you had a bag, you had to lower the bag and, and, so and let sniff him it. sniff it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're not playing with that. Yeah. But I will say it cut down on the weed smell that you smell on most ships. And I'm not even saying this is just a carnival thing. This was a less I smell yeah. weed on any ship. Yeah. Yeah. I think we may have smelled it like twice. And I said, y'all brave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all brave and y'all good. Because <laughs> I wouldn't even have tried it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, man. So we don't want you to get kicked off the ship and be charged any more money than what you done paid for your cruise. Because we know... <laughs> It costs a lot. You done saved all year. Yeah, you made your payments and excited, it. and then you let your extracurriculars get you kicked off. Yeah, for fine. it ain't that deep. Yeah, yeah, it ain't worth it. I'm telling Mm-mm. you. But if you decide to do it, it's on you. Feel free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, tip number twenty-two. Yeah. Let Carnival or your travel agent know about any of the things that could be considered like an ADA issue, or you have allergies or things like that. For instance, I have a pine nut allergy. So as soon as I do all of my bookings, I go in and I I notate that that's what it is. Um, so let like we said, let Carnival know or your travel agent know. So if you have like things like low vision or you have sensory issues or you're traveling right. with someone that has autism or any of those things that you feel like needs to be known or you're traveling with a CPAP, does the person have like asthma or anything like that? Let your people know. And it's not yeah. that we are trying to violate <laughs> or know. And I say we, because if you're not, if you don't know this, I'm a travel agent, a travel advisor. So if you need someone that's going to do your stuff and do it right, I'm your girl. Codefundtravel.com. Yeah. Shameless plug. plug. Yeah. And listen, then you don't have to sit on videos like this and learn it because a travel agent will walk you through it. Your own personal concierge. But anyway. Let us know, and we can notate it so that things like this do not go unnoticed. Right. What happened to me, and I'm so glad that they're starting to take your allergies way, way more, more seriously. Serious they are, yeah. Because usually I tell them, and you quite don't quite know if they really like got it, but this time they actually had a note in my room that was like, "Hey, Lynette, we know that you have a pine nut allergy. You know, the chefs know." That, you know, blah, 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 blah. But if you go to the buffets or any place like that, that's not catered to you in the dining rooms, you then basically you need to, you need yeah. to know what's in that before you consume it because yeah. it's on your, you're on your own at that right. point. So let them know. All right. Tip number 23. Now this one right here, even people who cruise oh, a lot Lord. get this wrong sometime because you can get caught up yep. into what's happening on the ship. Don't forget to do your mustard drill. Yes. What is a mustard drill? This is the safety briefing. This is where they're going to show you what you need to do just in case we have to abandon Abandon the ship. ship. So they're going to show you the lifeboats you're going to get on. They're going to show you the life uh, jacket, Mm -hmm. the vest that you have to put on. And we recommend that you do this as soon as you board the ship. That's what we do. We go straight to our zone. And how you know where you need to go, it's going to be on your boarding pass and it's going to be on your sign and sail card. Mm-hmm. So please don't miss that because every trip we be on, they come across <laughs> the intercom telling people that they have to do the, the e-muster. And the thing about it, we cannot leave until, until you, do, you it. do it. And they'll start calling your name. Yes. Your government. And, and here's the thing. People don't know the repercussions of it, that they will kick you off. For yeah. not doing that. 
Especially and now. Yes. They'll kick you off. Mm -hmm. So had that in the forefront of your mind. We already told you about the uh, putting your phone on airplane mode as soon as you get on the ship. Follow by that, the mustard drill. Yep. So let's see. Tip number 24. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is controversial as well. Some people be like, I don't like to do, I don't like to get dressed up. And that's really on you. But for every sailing, at least two days to five days, is going to be one elegant night. Yeah. Six days and or more, you're going to have at least two of those elegant nights. And what it means basically is they want you to spruce it up a little bit. Yeah. They want you to get a little bit more jazzy than you were walking around in your basketball shorts, walking around with and your swim shorts yeah, on, your tank yeah, top. Your tank top, you know, <laughs> your jean, your jean booty shorts, all that. They want you just to get a little bit more fancy with it. Does it mean that you need to do ball gown and tuxedos? Tux no. Nah. I mean, you can do a nice little sundress romper or whatever. Yeah, you can do as look, fellas. you can do as least. Meeting that threshold, or is or just doing the most. Right. Sometimes we be right in the middle. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like we just be doing the most. <laughs> but be aware that they do have elegant night. What happens if you don't want to participate in elegant night? They're a little bit more lax than they should be, in my opinion. But sometimes they will not seat you in the dining room or the specialty dining if you're not dressed That's appropriately right. for yeah. that night. Does it mean that you're not going to eat that night? No. It just means that you're going to have to eat somewhere else. So you may have to go to the buffet or something like that or eat at one of the quick eats like Guy's Burger or... Yeah, because you know. it, it happened to me on a celebration. On the second elegant night, I went to the restaurant. Uh, I had on my polo shirt and I had on a pair of cargo... Uh, dress shorts. Dress shorts. And they was like, no. Nah. No shorts. Yeah. Got to go back and put... And I went back and put on my slacks, man. So yeah, they do take that serious. They do. Yes. All right. Tip number 25. We get this question all the time. Is the cheers package worth it? And our answer is always yes and no, mm -hmm. because it depends on who you are. That's true. So we say if you are a heavy drinker and you already know if you are a heavy drinker, the cheers package is for you. It if is. you are not, if you know you are more of a social drinker, mm -hmm. you kind of drink a few drinks on the weekends or drink a few drinks when you go out to the bar on the weekends, but you ain't that throwing them back. And you know what I mean by throwing them back. The right. cheers package is not worth it. We got the cheers package for the first time back in 2021 for her birthday. <laughs> and we felt like we were just drinking, drinking just to be drinking to get our money's worth. It's the same yeah. trip I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tore my ligament. <laughs> so yeah, so it and and I love it that Carnival do give you up until the second day to purchase it. So you don't actually have to purchase it right in the beginning before you get on the ship, but it is cheaper if you do. Yeah. But at least you can get on and start spending and seeing how See much you're you gonna are. spend on alcohol before you start doing that because a lot of people don't consider the port days. Mm -hmm. So if you got two port days, you're getting off in the morning and not getting back on the ship to the evening. So that's drinks that you don't have. So you get back on the ship trying to get your 15 in there. Oh man. And the thing about <laughs> it, if you drink too much, if I know if I drink too much, you're gonna miss I'm some gonna days. miss some days because I'm gonna be hung over like a mug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh so we so on our last trip when we was on a on a celebration, the cheers package was gonna be like almost like 900 bucks. That's what we spent for everything. Yeah. As far as the spending. Yeah. And I'm like, and that was including buying alcohol. Yeah. So yeah, so we know it's not worth it for us. And if you need a number of drinks. I was like, if you ain't at least doing at least five to eight, I say five to eight yeah. um, a day, more more up further up towards the eight, in my opinion, I don't think. Yeah, because it it's going to fluctuate. Right. But there are some people that love the Cheers package because it does also include the Bubbles package, which means yes. basically any other drink <laughs> that you could put in your mouth and swallow down your throat. <laughs> yeah, is included in the cheers package as an unlimited add-on. So, right. specialty coffees, um, Soda, monster juice. drinks, milkshakes, all yeah. of that. You don't have to worry your bottle water. You don't have to worry about any of that when you have the cheers package because it's also an added on yes. bonus as well. And so. for those of you who don't know what the cheers package is, that's um, Carnival's unlimited drink package. So, unlimited alcohol, like the Queen just explained, mm -hmm. all the other stuff as well. But it allows you to get 15 drinks per person per day. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're in a cabin with another illegal adult, 
each of those people have to purchase a cheers package. Yep. I know we don't think it's fair that if you don't drink, you shouldn't have to purchase it. Be you should be able to, to do it. it should be cut in half. The person that wants to drink has to buy it, but unfortunately not. You both will have to buy it. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> not my rule. <laughs> yeah, that's their rule. So yeah, keep that in, in, in mind. And also we get this question a lot too. If I buy the cheers package, do my kids need to buy the bubbly package for the sodas? The bubbles. The bubbles package. So, mm -hmm. uh, or can I just share my sodas with them? Unfortunately, not. I mean, you can do what you want. You can share <laughs> yeah. it with them. But kind of what, the rules is that you're supposed to buy the, the bubbly package for them so they can have the unlimited sodas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you ain't supposed to. So each child, you have to buy for them just like you do the cheers package for the adults. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> All right, tip number 26. And this may be one of the biggest ones that will affect you in the greatest way. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And it is one of those things that now Carnival is not playing any games because... From a business perspective, you have to think about it like this. We had a major shutdown for the pandemic. Yeah. And these cruise lines were not, I mean, they were losing money. So now that we're up and running, this is the tip. Make sure that you can avoid any changes and cancellations to your cruise after you have booked it. What I mean by that is before you secure a booking, make sure that you're 99.99% .99 sure that you're going, going to, to go. go. Because yes. what is happening now is Carnival is, they were a little lax before the pandemic, but now they're not playing. They will charge you change fees. They will charge you administration fees. And if you have to make any kind of change after the final payment date, it comes at a, well, at right now, a $250 per person penalty. So if you're, one of those people say, I'm just going to keep booking stuff to have it on the books and I'll just wait and see what my PTO do. And then you don't get approved for the PTO for the week that you got your cruise book. Oh, I need to move it for a couple of weeks down. Two fifty per person if you have paid that cruise oh. off after final payment date. And the reason that Carnival said that they're doing that is because now they have to remarket and sell that cabin yep. to somebody else when you already had it secured. Yep. So that's going to come at a penalty to you. So basically, I ain't tell you to book it. That's <laughs> basically what they are saying at this point. So make sure that every, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I think <laughs> this is auntie and uncle advice. Yeah. Also, choose whoever your cabin mating with carefully. Carefully. When I say choose them carefully, what do you mean by that? You are basically going in a contract mm -hmm. with someone else to do their part so that you all can both be in that cabin together and go on that sailing. What I mean by that is if person A is committed to going and they know that, oh, the cabin is $1,600. Oh, I got $800 on my half. You got eight on yours. You don't pay your 800 but they don't they only don't put their deposit down. Yeah. So guess what happens? At the final payment date, if they have not made a payment, that's going to cancel and guess who's going to start getting penalized? You. You. You you you. Yep. The only way to rectify this is one person A has to pay the remaining of the cruise and go or you have to find somebody to replace them. Yep. And guess what? That also comes with some penalties as well because now we have change fees going yes. on with that. And then the other person has to pay there. There's a lot that goes into it. So pick your people carefully. Yeah, because we had somebody that's actually close to us. That happened to them. Somebody mm -hmm. promised them that they were going to cruise with them. Yes. And um, put the deposit down. They didn't come through. They were flaky. And... The, um, the person had to end up paying for the whole cruise by themselves. Yep, because it was either a cancel or pay 100%. And and you the know. bad part about it, the person didn't even tell the person. Mm -mm. They found out it from the grapevine. They did. Yeah. That was they the, did. That was the bad part. So we say if you inviting somebody to travel with you, and if they give you any kind of hesitation, maybe, I, I think I might I, do it. Oh, that looked like I don't, a good I don't time. know if I had the money. Don't even try to convince them. I'm going to do it on my income yeah, because, tax check. Yeah, because you are most likely setting yourself up for disappointment to lose a, a cousin, 
uh, uh, auntie, a mm-hmm. best friend because they stuck you on a carnival cruise and you had to spend more money than you were able. Or you lost it and you couldn't go. But here's a bonus tip. We kept on telling you guys we're going to tell you about the sign and sale card because we, we did. get that so much. So your sign and sale card is your access on and off the ship. It's your access to purchase everything on the ship. You cannot spend cash on the ship other than in the casino. Mm-hmm. They do have slots for that. And then also we talked about tipping people. Your sign and sale card is your lifeline. You want to put that on your lanyard, man. Just like so. Do not, oh, it's already. Yeah. Do not, do not put your sign and sale card in your pocket because if somebody find your sign and sale card, they're gonna have so much fun with your money. <laughs> yeah. That is your assets to yeah, so you your money. Keep that around your neck on your lanyard, just like this, to protect your money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that's what a sign and sale card is. Also, you got to know that there's uh, several ways that you can fund it. We kind of talked about a little bit throughout the video, but you can fund it with cash. You can fund it with credit cards and you can fund it with your debit card, which we highly recommend you don't do it because we just <laughs> right. told you about the holes. <laughs> and then also you can uh, fund it with prepaid cards as well, as long as they have a Visa mm-hmm. or a Master logo. And you also can fund it with Carnival's gift cards. You can also fund it with Carnival's cash, uh, yeah, cruise cash. Their, their cruise cash or their bar cash. So we say the most easiest thing to fund it with is with a credit card or cash and then sell it up the credit card when you get back home. Mm-hmm. That now, is the easiest way. So yes. that's that's your sign and sale card. In a nutshell. Yes. But another question we always get, oh, this bonus is going on and on, <laughs> is if I put money on it, I'm cash on it. Yes. Can I get the money back? Yeah, they're oh, not going yeah. Yeah, they're not gonna keep that. your money. But what happens is you have to go and cash that money out. Yes. So make sure that you do that. Um at you know, they will, if it's a certain amount of money, they will mail you a check. But that's that's a whole process that you just don't want to go through. Yeah. So and yes. S- and since you brought that up, if you decide to fund it with um cruise cash or bar cash and you purchase that on Connell's website as well, if you don't lose use it, you lose it. So that's why we recommend just doing it with cash or with the credit card. So that way you can get your money back. That part. (laughs) That part right there. All right. If you have enjoyed this video, we want you to check out this video. Nick's 13 mistakes to avoid on your first carnival cruise. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace, Peace. y'all.